Adrian. <laughs> I was just catapulted out, manipulated, I would say, out of a film that I was signed for, that uh, everything was prepared for. Edith had it, done the wardrobe for. $50,000 they had already invested in making the wardrobe for an Orson Welles picture, where George Pepart was supposed to be my partner, where I was the lead. It was a big melodramatic story, a remake of an old Berkman, Ingrid Bergman film. And my husband, <laughs> whom I just married, Paul Hubschmidt, he read the script and he turned crazy and telling me this is shit, this is melodramatic and if you do that I'm gonna divorce from you and he was pressuring me and since I loved him I believed him and like a stupid goose somewhere I allowed him really to influence me against my own good because not only had I worked on the House of Cards already a dialogue coach had prepared uh, uh, with three weeks before starting to shoot this picture in Rome and then all of a sudden, I mean, I was so stupid, I went up to the eighth floor, to the commissary and said, don't you think it's a little melodramatic? I mean, it was a script that was rewritten five, six times for Orson Welles, who's one of the icons of international cinematography. So I was dumb, I was stupid, I was innocent. And um, to, fill, to fill our bourse, since he was very well living of the rather big money I made in America, without me being aware also. I was supposed to do another film quickly and I was offered this killer. <laughs> I never saw what I did. When I looked at it for the first time 20 years later because it was running over and over on German television, I was, I was just sitting there and crying. I mean, tears were running down. I said, how to kill a big upcoming career? I mean, to play a role like that, okay, I wasn't bad. I'm a good actress. I was believable at this psychopathic uh, mad woman in this dramatic killing madness scene, okay? So I could play that, but I didn't have to prove that. It is no bridge of identification, no sympathy role. Uh, nobody give me any kind of uh, interesting part after that. So it was meant to kill my career in a certain way. There were still some international independent productions that didn't want to work with me. It was not all that destroyed yet, my career. But it was already, I mean, uh, before it really begun, it was already uh, had passed the high peak in a certain way. Because I had already done something that was not meant to be done in the industry, of course. As a, the first picture, I was all of a sudden put opposite Michael Caine in Funeral in Berlin. She's in his trade, and right now she's giving him the business. We want that money. We mean to get those papers. Uh, as a newcomer and as a German to play an Israeli spy, it was in a certain way a political. It was a sensation people worldwide talked about it because Salzman Productions was James Bond's producers and so were very much looked at they were commercial and they were important so that a German played an Israeli was something and then Salzman offered me a Bond role um, I mean a Bond girl I didn't want to be so I had some kind of sense of protective sense of self value that was not very well looked at I mean I should have been very shy and very thankful and very, oh yes, oh please, anything, or just that you recognize me. No, but I was having a sense of myself and I was refusing to do that. So Salzman hated me for that and blocked me in this contract. Who do you think you are? You think you're Elizabeth Taylor? There are 50,000 girls standing in line, you bitch. And he was hating me for that, that I was having the guts to say, no, I didn't want to be this fucking Bond girl. And when I saw this movie, she gets shown in front of the sharks. Karin Dorr played it. Oh, luckily, I didn't do that. What a horrible role. Terrifying. That's where I went wrong. You had the knife in your hand. You were trying to kill your husband. Not the other way around. <laughs> when I look at the picture, I say again, I mean, there's two things. There is a picture, the format of thriller, uh, okay. It's not my favorite format. And if then I would like to have, being a killer, I'd like to have more space and evolve. Why is this woman, is she a psychopath? What is behind or so? I wasn't, I was just a 
piece, an instrument uh, in black leather, asthmatic, uh, he holding the knife with black uh, hand shoes, and in the end discovered being a killer. So what? I mean, how to kill a career? <laughs> this gallery scene there that he sees over and over again I mean he has this vision of seeing her on the floor and stretching out and so I remember that it was a uh, yeah I could imagine madness because I had gone through madness not in my personal state of madness but I had seen my father being a madman I'd realized I came from a mad society I was shocked with German history I wanted to run away from here and madness was a subject matter. I had read a lot of uh, Dostoevsky. So madness was a matter that was uh, uh, captured by my mind. You're going to die. You're going to die. <laughs> like all the others. <laughs> Do you want me to show you? Of course, it, it's, easy to, it's easy to play. I couldn't kill a fly. <laughs> Help me! <laughs> what is visible or what is interpretable for the spectator into this personality uh, isn't really on the paper. So I cannot say that I worked upon uh, what is the inner drive of that ill woman. I didn't do that. And uh, Argento didn't guide me there either. I mean, what, what is her personality, if you do want to analyze her and to make a skeleton out of, out of her somewhere? Um, why does she kill women? Why, what is, what is, what is uh, the, the deeper reason in her personality that she is, is she, uh, sexually frustrated? This is like, I mean, using a woman's cliché to justify the men's fear, um, if you want me to interpret it as, an, as a feminist, okay? I was subject, uh, an object rather, and victim uh, rather, of male abuse. Give uh, me the knife! Don't shoot. Let her go. There's no way out. So, uh, what can I say? But um, I'm, I'm very grateful for uh, Dario Argento's development ever since there, and that he has made a good career, good for him. I remember him kindly, an intelligent, uh, kind, friendly man. I have no bad memories, uh, uh, no tension, no aggressivity. It was pleasant. He wasn't nervous, he wasn't... So because um, somewhere lack of sovereignty is uh, replaced by aggressiveness or seeming authoritarian behavior, he didn't have all that, no? He was sensitive, um, um, yeah, sensitive and tactful and kind. You're out of your mind. You can't just grab a foreign citizen and accuse him of murder. Tony was occupied with himself and uh, he was, I don't know, he wasn't very interested in others. I think he was very egocentrically. And I, I, I judged interiorly without uh, saying this aloud, he'll not make a big career, he's too, uh, uh, too closed down. He's very charming. I saw him on the screen when I looked at it today. He's a very beautiful, attractive man and he was good as well. There. He, he looks intelligent and sportive and young. He didn't make a career, maybe because of that kind of uh, uh, personality. He seemed like uh, egocentrically withdrawn, uh, occupied with himself. He was not very communicative. Help me! <laughs> Come back to... Uh, what did I do as a work to create this role uh, when, for instance, in the end I, I'm sadic or so? I was never sadic, but the sadism that was used in me always needs a counterpart. Sadism needs a counterpart. I was a masochist. The masochism, not physical, but a, ma a mental or a psychic masochist. I always came back here because here I wanted to be respected in Germany. And here I am again because my daughter is on the market here. They even stole my daughter from me put her right there where they couldn't get me. And here I am, still trying to get myself the respect they owe me. <laughs> So if Kinski is, I mean, so admired in Germany, he's a psychopath as well. He was a madman. 
He was very particular. He was definitely not conventional. He had a magnetism, there's no doubt about it. He was very interesting in his, in his mannerism, in a certain way. Oh, gib mir deinen Erdbeermund! Ich erinnere mich noch, diese uh, uh, unbelievable, pretentious blow-ups that he had. I mean, it's easy to do, but it seems like Germans are very well, very easy to be bluffed by something considered genius. Like Herzog admired him always. I thought he was very, very unpleasant as a partner, very egomaniac, very, uh, I mean, blowing it himself up in a very uh, little uh, sympathetic way, arriving in Yugoslavia with 25 pieces of luggage uh, and a Bentley, uh, pretending to star, and uh, I'm sorry. <laughs>